All right, everyone, I'm putting together this video as a list of 13 items that I've identified that you would think about before you buy your Tesla and to do as you're waiting on your Tesla to show up. As always, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button because it really, really helps the channel out a lot. And if you're looking to buy a Tesla, which is probably why you're watching this video, don't forget to use a referral link. I have one listed below that will get you a thousand miles of free supercharging. If you already know somebody use theirs, it really helps the community out a lot to use a referral link. Uh, but again, I have one below if you need if you need one. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so the first item is what I already mentioned in the intro of the video is using a referral link. So what's that look like? So I've gone out to a site, I've clicked on actually what my link looks like, and this is where you would end up really with uh, anyone's links, what the page looks like. So let's take a look at the actual page itself. Here's what the page looks like after you click a referral link. You can simply hit custom order for which model you're looking for, or look at the existing inventory for that model sitting out there. And then you just go from there and place the order for the car that you're looking for. Item number two, now that you've ended up on the page of the car you want to buy, you need to keep in mind that Tesla does not do model years. And I'll explain that a little further. So your car will have a model year. For example, I have a 2020 Model X. And any car you order right now is a 2020 Tesla. Before, Tesla would roll over their model years on the first of the year and that would be that model year. So anything built in that actual year was the model year. Starting in 2019, they rolled over the model year on October 1st. So all cars built after October 1st were 2020s. So that was a little bit of a departure. The reason why I say they don't do model years is Tesla simply deploys changes to their cars. That will be regardless of what time of year it is and has nothing to do with the actual year that your car was built in. So for example, in April of last year, while they were still in the 2019 model years, they rolled out changes to both the Model X and Model S for batteries and suspension, etc. cetera. Uh, before that, they, they changed up Autopilot to in, improve and in, include enhancements to that, which was also done mid-year. Uh, this was also something that affected me recently where I bought a 2020 Model X in October and in November they introduced a new style seat. So one month into the 2020 model year, the Model X got a new seat. So they didn't wait until the next model year. So all cars, all Model X is built now. I have like a 30 day window of a of the seat for 2020s that don't exist on the rest of the 2020s as they improve the seat design. So you're gonna have to remember that. If you're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna wait for the next model year because it's gonna have this thing, you'll just be waiting forever because Tesla just makes improvements. And the car that you buy now will still not be a bad car. Like you're not, if, if you have FOMO or fear of missing out and you're just constantly and constantly waiting to buy your Tesla because it's going to have the next thing, you got to stop doing that. Like that's, that's just not, you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life because they iterate all the time. And so you're going to get that car as you get it now. Um, however, in the software, it's constantly improving anyways. So you're really not having as much FOMO. Like you still are gonna get all of the stuff that everybody else gets uh, when there's a software update. The other thing to think about when you're getting a Tesla is how do you use your car? Are you using it as a local car? Are you driving long distance in it? Do you only have electric vehicles or do you have an EV and a regular gas car? And then how much room do you actually need? If you're a local driver and you don't drive around a lot and you're really just using the car to drive around town or especially in like I live in the DFW Metroplex, around town can be pretty far. <laughs> like from one side of Dallas to the other can be over an hour to get there. So it's still a really long way. But the standard range Model 3, for example, comes with 250 miles of range. But if you're going to go long distances in the car, the long range is going to do 322 miles. If you plan on driving the car long distance, and I'm talking like three or four or five hours away, 
you will notice a difference between 250 miles and 322 miles. That extra 72 miles of range is absolutely noticeable if you're planning on taking trips in one of these cars. The Model S long range, for example, there's only two options. You have the long range and you have the performance. So this gets 373 miles in its long range version and the performance still gets 348 miles. At those two ranges, taking a trip in either one of these is going to be... It's not going to be that noticeable on the difference because after you go this many miles, especially for me, I'm, I'm a kind of person that gets out of the car um, and to, to go eat. I'm not really one of those who just grabs a bunch of fast food, sits in the car and, you know, eats while I drive. That's not, that's not really my style. So the difference between these two cars is really going to be negligible and you're not going to notice the difference. Now on the Model X, it's a little different. The long range is at 328 miles, so it's about 50 miles shorter than the Model S. And the performance is 305 miles. So you're still talking about 15, 18 miles of range here difference. That's still not going to be that noticeable. Um, but anything over 300 miles is, is, pretty, is pretty good. It, it's, it's a lot longer than you think it is. Now the Model Y is a little different and this guy hasn't actually released yet, but if you're considering a Model Y, the rear wheel drive long range is showing at 300 miles and the dual motor long range is showing at 280. Now these are their estimated ranges. So as of the making of this video at the end of January, I don't know. I, I really feel like this is probably going to push 300 miles. Um, and this one's going to be pushing like more in the 320s. At least that's kind of what we're seeing. The other question is how much room do you need? Teslas are very misleading when you look at them from the outside. I've done a whole video like on the Model 3 in the interior of the Model 3. There is a ton of room in this thing. But if you need to seat more than five people, your options are the Model Y and the Model X. And I'm gonna go ahead and say the Model Y because we are so close to delivery that as this video ages in the next probably a month or two, it's gonna be relevant. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Both of these cars will seat seven people, um, but these are the only two seven seat electric vehicle options that are out there in the marketplace right now. Number four. Now that you've decided on which car you want, you're gonna to wanna to look at the purchase price. One thing that I'm not entirely ecstatic about is the way that Tesla shows the purchase price on the website. They default to this little tab up here that says include potential savings. I wanna know what I'm paying for a car. I don't, I don't want you to talk about include potential savings. I'm going to save so much over electricity over a certain amount of years and blah, blah, blah. I, get, I don't, I don't, I, I get it's a marketing thing. Show me kind of, you know, they're trying to show you, you look, this car is really only going to cost you around 35. This isn't what you're paying for the car. Now they have it down here at the bottom, potential savings and purchase price, but I always click this. It's just personal preference. When you're looking at a car, it really helps to just outline, you know, the number you're looking at. I, I don't need your, your math. Like, just show me what I'm looking at. So remember, if you want to, slide that little slider over to look at the actual price that you're paying for the car. Number five, there are secret hidden Model 3s that aren't listed on this website. And there's a lot of people who don't know about these two secret hidden Model 3s. Now, a lot of people originally heard when they announced the Model 3 that it start at $35,000. So the first secret hidden car is the $35,000 Model 3. So how do you actually get a $35,000 Model 3? You have to order a $39,000 Model 3. Configure the car the way you want it, click on next, go all the way through the purchasing process and place your order. They're gonna send you some links, you're gonna log into the back end and look at your account, and they're gonna want you to finalize some documents in the back end. Do not finalize those documents. Once you've placed your order, reach out to the Tesla rep that will email and contact you and say that you wanna change from the standard range plus 
to the standard range. They'll go into the back end, they'll switch over to the $35,000 car, they'll send you some new documentation, and you're good to go. But you can get the $35,000 Model 3. That's the first secret hidden Model 3. The second secret hidden Model 3 is what they call a stealth performance. Now when you click performance here, your only options are these wheels, these brake calipers, and it to look like this. However, there's a lot of people, when they look at the rims, would prefer these wheels, but they're grayed out. So there is what they call a Stealth Model 3. You can get the Performance Model 3, but it will look like a Long Range Model 3 with these particular rims. And it's a little bit cheaper than the actual Performance Model 3. So as you can see, if you look at a standard Performance Model 3, it starts at $56,990. A Stealth Performance Model 3, this is a buddy of mine that ordered one, and he did come back in and add the Aero Sport wheels. So his car, if you take off this $1,500, the Stealth Performance is $49,490. So you get the performance level car for around $6,000 cheaper. Now he added in the wheels, so after destination fee and order fees and everything, you know, his, his was 51. So these are kind of the base prices. So he added the performance wheels back in and got it at 51, uh, but you can get it at 49. So it's a, it, it makes it look like a long range car, but you actually can get the performance package on it. So you get it for about $1,000 more than the long range itself. But you have to remember, you will get the reduced range, and but you get the performance package. Now, like you won't get the carbon fiber, um, you know, you don't get the lowered exp lower suspension, you don't get the carbon fiber spoiler or the performance brakes or track mode, uh, but you get uh, the performance speed, right? So you'll get this guy right here. I don't know if you get track mode or not. You might get track mode. I, I'd have to confirm that. But that is a stealth Model 3 that you can call. You have to specifically call Tesla to get that. Now, you can. it doesn't matter how you order. So you could say, I'm going to place the uh, order for a long range, and then you can call Tesla after the fact again before you sign all your documentation and ask if there's any stealth Model 3s on the way or in production or in stock, etc. And a lot of the times they do have those. So you can check that out and see if, you know, you might get lucky and find a stealth out there. Number six, my philosophy when buying an electric car, get as much range as you can afford because life does change and you never know what you're going to do with this car. And like my first car, when I bought a Leaf, I thought to myself, eh, it's an electric car, it's kind of cool, I'll drive it around maybe every now and then, but I'll still primarily drive my, my gas cars. Then the next thing I know, we're only driving the Leaf, because we're like, this is ridiculous, why are we driving a gas car? I don't ever have to go to a gas station if I just charge the Leaf up all the time. And all of a sudden you fall in love with this electric car, and your entire life changes for the better, and you're like, oh my word, I want to drive this thing everywhere. And you end up going in the car a lot further and using it for a lot more than you thought of you did. So if you're an around town driver or your budget only supports 250, it is still a absolutely fantastic car. You can travel in it. You will have to maybe charge a little more, but with the supercharger network, it's absolutely possible. So don't think that I'm saying that this isn't possible because it absolutely is. But if you can afford the long range, anybody I've ever talked to who said, well, I could have afforded the long range. I just was, you know, I went for the standard range because it's 39. Most of those people that I've talked to have come back and said, should have got the long range because now we love this car and we drive it everywhere and we want to drive it. There's a lot of people who are like, I never really drive long distance because 
I'm not really a driver, but then they get their Tesla and they're like, I just want to go places. Like, I just want to get in the car. I want to put it on the nav and like, I want to autopilot. Just drive me there. I, I never thought that. Like, I was one of those guys. Like, I, don't, I just want to sit at the house. I got my Model X and I'm like, dude, let's go. Let's find a place to drive to. And I've already taken like three trips in the thing. It's been fantastic. Anyways, get as much range as you can afford. But obviously there's, there's budget constraints for people. Totally understand that. But if you can afford it, Get as much range as you can afford. Number seven, tires and wheels. You're getting an electric car, and you've probably heard that the torque in an electric car is instant. And if you haven't heard that, the torque in an electric car is instant. And if you don't know what torque is, that's what gives you all your power off the line. Now, horsepower gets you going when you get kind of going, but that torque is all that power that if you've ever floored the car, that's what really pulls you back in your seat. So there's a lot of people who get confused on what they're actually getting. I had BMWs for years, back a long time ago, that came with those low profile skinny tires. And those tires just don't last. And they didn't last on my BMW. They're not gonna last on anything. You might get on average 10 to 20,000 miles out of those tires. Now, I've known people who've gotten the Performance Model 3, and don't get me wrong, they love it, but they get in there and they just floor it everywhere they go. And I know somebody who burned up a rear set of Model 3 tires in 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles, the tires were gone. These are low profile tires. They are meant for grip and traction, not long distance. Grip and traction. Now there are options out there that you can maybe get a different tire compound or et cetera. Like I think I eventually found some low profile tires on my BMWs that started lasting me 18 to 20,000 miles instead of like 12,000 miles. But you will go through tires. You need, to, you need to think about, I need to rotate these tires. Hear me on this. Because what you think you're buying is this little four door sedan family car. But what's hidden in the guts of this thing is this thing. Like, it's all this crazy supercar power hiding inside this four-door looking machine. Like, you think you're getting this, but you're getting under the covers something like this. Like, you're getting, especially in the performance model, like, you're, you're, you're going to smoke Lamborghinis. Like, Corvettes, you'll come up to the line and you'll just freaking... Eat them. Boom. I mean, that thing is fast. Okay. Fast. You need to think about that with tires. It's one of the reasons why the Model 3 Stealth, a lot of people are liking because they get the performance, but they get the smaller rim, which allows you to get a more all season tire. And so the tires will last longer. Now, there are people out there who just don't care. They want the look of this guy. They love it. They love the grip. Of the, and they, they don't care if they have to put new tires on it every ten to 20,000 miles. It, it, dude, if that's you, go for it. And there's going to be some people who are going to comment on this thing and be like, nah, man, I've got these low-profile tires, and they last uh, 90 million miles. Good for you. I'm glad you found the unicorn of tires out there that last forever. Like, that's great. I don't do low-profile tires anymore. I can't stand changing tires very often. Just not my thing. I got these tires for the Model X because they came with all season tires, which are, you know, they're ready to last a lot longer over these. Now these also look fantastic, but if you're looking at getting a Model X, these 22 inch Onyx black turbine wheels have a rougher ride, they'll reduce your range, and you're gonna be putting tires on it all the time. Do they look cool? Yes, they look amazing. Would it be great if Tesla offered a black wheel? They do, you can buy it aftermarket, it's $5,500. So if you don't want to spend $5,500, I know a lot of people and what they're doing is they're going ahead with these rims on like their Model S's, their Model X's, or even like the Model 3, depending on what they want. And I didn't know this, but I wish I would. I didn't know this before I bought my car because I really wanted black and I just didn't want to spend the money on it. But now that I bought the car, I found out you can get your rims powder coated for like three to six hundred dollars, depending on where you take it. And they will look 
you can pick whatever color you want. And I plan on getting my wheels done, and they're gonna be they're gonna look like this. They won't be 22s, but I'll still have this size using all seasons, and I get the black rim, and it's cheaper than paying five thousand dollars to Tesla for the same rim. So I'm gonna do that because that's totally worth it to me, and it's a lot cheaper. Number eight, let's talk seats. I got the black interior because it comes with it. The black interior is very nice. Um, I happen to like it. The seats are great. I have kids. They're not going to stain. Not going to have anything get on them. They're high quality. They're fantastic. The white seats look great. They're a very Tesla white seat, and a lot of people like them. I think they look fantastic, too. I, don't get me wrong. They look great. The thing with white seats that I have heard is that your blue jeans will rub off blue on the seats. Now, there are people and there are videos out there. It's not going to be me because I don't have white seats to actually show you how to clean them. Um, I have heard of people getting the white seat ceramic coated in some way. I, I, I saw a video on that where they actually called it ceramic coating the seats. I didn't know you could ceramic coat the seats. I would definitely get them treated in some way. I mean, I've had people on our Facebook pages and stuff that they are got their jeans sitting in vats of vinegar trying to get the blue to stop rubbing off on their seats. So just be aware that you're going to need to do some planning for the white seats, uh, especially if you're wearing jeans. They look fantastic, but just maybe find a video out there, but that, that is something with the white seats. The cream interior, I haven't heard anything like that. It's the, These have been fine. I don't actually know anybody who's got the cream interior, but uh, I didn't get it. I, I actually preferred the black. I think the black looked looked really nice. I don't really like the... It's just a personal preference. Thing, right? I don't like the light wood. I don't know. Then you have black up here. And then you have cream down here. I don't, I don't know. It, look, with the black, it all matched. And I like the wood better. It's a personal preference, right? I mean, if you like that... I mean, some people like this because it's a little, it's a little brighter. Um, you don't feel like you're in a bat cave, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. These look really good. You know, the black batches, black and white. Man, they look really good. The white seats look fantastic. It's just going to be a little bit more maintenance. You need to be ready for that. Okay, so let's talk home charging. So what you'll need to do to get ready for home charging is the best idea is to get what's called a 1450 plug installed. Now, a 1450 plug looks like this. And I have my Tesla mobile charger plugged into the 1450 plug. I got the little wall mount, which puts my, so I can plug just as a holder um, to put the charging cable um, handle in here and then wrap the cord around here. These outlets will typically run you around $500 to get installed. Now that's gonna depend on, that's gonna depend heavily on where the outlet is located. Um, I built, I had this house built, and so I had these run when I built the house. Now I put one here and here, um, and this is for my wife's uh, other electric car, um, but I have them in every bay of the garage. Um, and my daughter has a, a electric car too, and there's a plug over in the other bay. Now it's, again, the price is really gonna depend on, I think the distance that they have to go to run one of these, but the difference between plugging into, say one of these 110 outlets compared to one of these 1450 outlets is pretty, it's pretty big. If you do a lot of driving or even, you know, basic around town driving, I've seen people live off of a 110, don't get me wrong. Um, but these are, these can be a lifesaver. Like if you have a day where you do a lot of driving and you need to make sure that car gets charged up, this thing is just night and day difference between, uh, plugging on a 110 outlet compared to running on a 1450 outlet. So getting your plug installed is something that you should probably just go ahead and do, um, once you order your car, because depending on, you know, electricians and wanting to get some prices, you can just go ahead and get it put in. Um, now. Let's talk the difference between the wall connector and the actual mobile charger that the car comes with. So here's the deal. 
the mobile charger, you're able to change out this small little plug tip with all of these different types of plugs. Now, these individual plugs, and there's a $14.50 here, are $35 each. So I bought a $14.50 and I bought a $10.30 that looks like this. The $14.50 is all standard dryer plugs today, built after, I think, like 2006? I don't remember. And then, before, and then prior to that year, they were 1030s. So when I go to my in-laws house, their utility room is right beside, on the other side of the wall where you park your car. And so there's a little window there and we just kind of plop it in there and I plug this guy in. And so I get a, you know, that's still a dryer outlet level state of charge uh, and I'm able to use this. And I have this, so I spent $70 total on two plug tips. This is the Tesla wall connector. This thing wires in directly into the wiring of the house. So you don't actually use the 1450 plug. I think you can wire your own plug up to it. Like you could have your electrician maybe, when I looked underneath there at one point, like there was a little hole that you could punch out and wire, and wire an actual 1450 plug on it if you wanted to. Does this look better? I mean, yeah. Who's going to see it? It's one of those things where you can do this and get a 1450 plug tip for 35 bucks, and you're going to charge maybe a few miles an hour slower than if you got this guy here. It will not be noticeable when you have it plugged in overnight and you just plug and you just, you know, you're never, you're never really all the way dead anyways in an electric car. I'm a very frugal kind of guy and you're spending $500 to get the same effect. It's not that it's not cool looking. You're spending $500 for cool. If you want to spend $500 for cool, go for it. <clears throat> for me, I'm going to I just spent the 35 bucks. I got the tip, I plug in the mobile charger, good to go. Like not that big of a deal. Number 10, necessary accessories. Now, I'm looking at some necessary accessories for me, and it's just my own opinion, but these are accessories I would get. So, especially if you're getting a standard or standard plus Model 3, there are some odd things that it doesn't come with. For example, it doesn't come with floor mats. I'm going to spend the $95 and I'm going to get floor mats, so but just be aware that the only the long range of the performance come with floor mats. Okay, cell phone charging. This is another accessory. Tesla came out with this for the Model 3, which is a wireless phone charger, which I think is great. You just kind of lay your phone on it and you charge it. I'm going to spend the 125. I'm getting this thing. Like this is this is fantastic. Now they have another one which includes these charging cables which kind of wraps around and it just kind of it puts a charging cable in this same area like it'll be a little cable that kind of pokes out the end down here the the problem with them are is the same thing that's the problem with the model x so this is kind of what it looks like right it'll have this little guy sticking up down here i cannot in good conscience buy this thing like i have heard nothing but bad stuff like and the reason is these little things on the side and in the Model 3, there's really no little things on the side. So it's just, just kind of there. Uh, I mean, this little rubber mat could possibly help keep it from moving around. But the problem is, I have a thick phone case. And so if I, if I take this thing off, then it's probably the right size. But if you have a thicker phone case it's kind of a pain in the butt to like get the thing on there and like click it into place. And this one, the problem with this is, is on the Model S and Model X, these two things are meant for you not to have a phone case. Everyone has a phone case these days. And I've seen some people who are 3D printing these little holders on the side, but I'm not a fan. Like the only thing I would think I could see me buying, if I had a Model 3, I would totally get the wireless phone charger. Uh, I, I would go for that. The other two, personal opinion, I wouldn't go for these two. They're just, I can't, 
I can't in good conscience recommend them. If you get a Model S and a Model X, your car will come with Homelink. Model 3s don't come with Homelink. Get this installed. It's life changing. I realize it's 300 bucks. It's one of those must have kind of things. I paid $42,000 for another car recently that also didn't include Homelink. I don't know if that's becoming a thing that people aren't putting Homelink in as much as possible, but Homelink, especially if you have garage doors or you have you know gates to a condominium or apartment you live in, having that little you know thing that the little remote that clicks on your visor and t man, man, no. Get Homelink. What's nice about Tesla's Homelink is if you pull up to a certain spot, you can tell it like if you pull up to your house, it'll automatically open your garage door for you. That keeps you from having to hit the button. That's a first world problem. I don't want to reach my hand up and hit the button. But this thing is fantastic. And in my other car, there's 42,000 miles that I have to have the stupid little thing on there. The little plastic remote for the garage just clatters and vibrates. Like you're going down the road and I can just hear the thing. And I'm constantly trying to get it to stop like making noise. Like just because it, you know, they're cheap, right? This built in, good. I'm getting this. If I'm, if I'm getting a Model 3, boom, it's going in. Love it in my Model X came with it. I would, I'm getting this if I'm getting a Model 3. Probably the same, going to be the same for Model Y. I, I don't know for sure, but if the Model Y doesn't come with home link, I'm putting it in. That's happening. My Model X includes a front mat. This is the front mat for the Model y, the Model 3. I reviewed a performance Model 3 that did not have a front mat. You need a front mat. Like, I would recommend probably the one of their rubber ones. Like, they're all season front mats. Because if you're like me, do you put stuff in the trunk and just stuff happens, man. Like, I would probably recommend one of these all weather. I'm going to get all weathers for my frunk and my trunk and my Model X just because <sighs> I've had all weather mats back there before in other cars and they always save you from having a bunch of junk in that carpet back there. So, highly recommend getting one of the mats. Model S and Model X come with the key fob. Now the Model 3, you use a little card thing and then people are saying that you can use you know, your phone, you walk up to it. I have heard both ends of the spectrum on using your phone because it has to sense your Bluetooth and then I've heard people complain that like sometimes it doesn't sense it when they walk up and it's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but I have a key fob for my Model X and never have an issue. I just walk up to the car and it works perfectly every time. For me, I will probably, this is, a, this is an accessory, I would say try out your setup. If you want to try the phone, see how it works for you. If it gets annoying, get the key fob. It's there. I'm probably going to end up getting a key fob. I think I'm going to get a 3 or a Y from my wife coming up. Probably going to get a key fob. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot and just kind of see what it's like, you know, using the phone or whatever. I'm not going to hold that little card. I'm not going to dig around and hold that thing up there to unlock my car. I'm not going to do that. That's not happening. Okay? I'm either, my phone is either going to work and it's going to be great, or I'm getting the key fob. Either way, that's what I'm going to do. I would recommend try something out first. See if it works for you. If it starts to get to be a problem, just get the key fob. Key fob works right every time. Also, the key fob's got some function in it to where you can make the car pull forward and backwards. You can do that with your phone and your app too. Totally get it. Just a recommendation. Out of everything we talked about, probably the key fob and the home link, you're going to need to order after you get the VIN number for your car. Because they're probably going to ask you to tie it to a VIN number because they need to... They, the, Home link they're going to have to install, so they're going to need to know what car it's going to. Um, I don't know if you can call them during the order process and have that all installed from the factory. Uh, that would be cool. Um, I'd call, see if you can do that. I I'm not sure on that, whether you can do that. If not, place that order and get that stuff ready. Um, all this stuff you can prepare kind of ahead of time. When you place an order through the Tesla shop, some of this stuff, depending on stock, depending on availability, could take, you know, two to four weeks to come in. Um, I've had stuff come in as quick as a week. I've had stuff come in as in three weeks. I think it also has to do when during the quarter you place an order. 
a lot of people tend to place orders into the quarter. And so there are a lot of people, you'll see kind of how Tesla ramps, a lot of cars are coming in at the end of the quarter. So you have, you know, the, the month right after that, you have a lot of people buying stuff. And so uh, as it wears on, it may, it may get better. Number 11, placing your order, finance, lease. I mentioned it before. If you can, place your order as early in the quarter as you can. And when I mean quarter, I mean, if you don't know what that means, that's like January, February, March. So that's a quarter of the year. Place your order as early in January as you can get it. Because the first, sooner you get in line, your car is coming in at a time that isn't pure chaos at Tesla delivery centers. There are so many people who get so deep into the quarter, they start placing orders. And if you're one of those people that you're getting your car like the last week of the quarter, it is mad chaos at the delivery centers. There are so many cars coming in. Tesla is pushing as hard as they can to hit their delivery numbers. And there are just cars everywhere. And when you're going in there, these guys are already stretched thin enough because as, as a company, they, they are ramping. And so if you're trying to get really good communication at the end of a quarter for Tesla, sometimes that can be challenging. So the closer and sooner you place that order, the better for getting your car at a good time. So financing, I found finance to be fairly easy from a credit union. That's something you guys can kind of reach out to. I know in California, you probably have some more options through Tesla's website directly. There's just a lot of companies out there. Probably just Google it. Uh, most of the credit unions I found were pretty simple because, because they didn't have the same rules as like I would say a standard bank has trying to get the Tesla's finance because Tesla's got to jump through a whole bunch of unnatural hoops to get a card to you because of the old, outdated, antiquated laws around selling cars. Insurance, I found insurance to be cheaper at Progressive. Um, I know if you please, you just call around. I know in California that you can now get insurance directly through Tesla that's a lot cheaper. Um, but for me, every other insurance company I called, uh, Progressive was like 75% cheap. Like they were, they were a third, honestly, of what uh, other companies were. So that's a good one to check out. All right, preparing for delivery after you've placed your order through a referral link. Reach out to a Tesla salesperson that you have either worked with or go to one of your local design centers and talk to them. Um, they will absolutely help you out and can be very key for communication. Because the group that's, that you'll get an email from after you place your order is in Vegas. And that group is slammed with thousands of orders from all over the place. And so getting a response back from them was typically kind of a challenge. So I would, I would reach out to one of those salespeople at the design center. Uh, I know that my salesperson helped me out a ton. And I was able to call him. Uh, you know, and he can check the back end system. In fact, I got my VIN number from him before it ever even hit the website. So I was able to go and work on my insurance. But those, the guys out of those uh, sales offices are amazing people to work with. Um, so that's just a recommendation I'd have. Tesla is absolutely ramping their service. And so you have to remember like placing your, again, placing your order early so you're not getting in the mad rush for taking a delivery at the end of the quarter. Um, you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache. Um, and it, you know, just remember, you know, they are ramping as a company. Um, and so there are times that it can kind of be hard to get a hold of somebody depending on what, what you're trying to do. So number 13, after you take delivery of your car, booking service through the app is faster most of the time than calling somebody. Go ahead and keep trying to call the service center if you have an emergency that you, that you need to do, but at the same time, book the appointment through the app because it pushes you into a queue and you're liable to get somebody even quicker and they're gonna start texting you um, and you can let them know what's going on and they can start pulling logs from your car remotely. And I, I actually do both, but the one of the things you should always do is book through the app. 
there is power in the Tesla app that it's it is it's going to be different for you, for people coming from the regular world where you're used to just calling up a you know calling up service at your local uh, automobile dealership and or you just kind of take it in there or you know you could just kind of take your car to service kind of wherever like Tesla's using current technology like just book the appointment through the app the first thing if you got a problem book it then call but go ahead and get it in here because you're liable to get through faster that way it's just it's a different way of running service the last thing I'll leave you with is when you do book service, a lot of the time they're going to send out the ranger service and it'll be the mobile person that comes out. These guys are territory based. Be nice to them because when they come out, they're probably going to be the guy that you're going to see every single time. And the reason I tell you to be nice to them is because like you, this is a relationship kind of thing, right? Where you've got this amazing new piece of technology that happens to be an automobile and these guys could be your saving grace when it, you know, no matter what happens. Maybe you need an off software update, and you know they'll hook you up, right? Like, like build a relationship with your mobile guy, because what, because because that you don't get a, you usually do not get a different guy every time. Like they're, um, they will come out. These people, the, that person is usually assigned to, like I said, assigned to a territory, and you will see them more than once. And so, kindness goes a long way. I, I'll just say that. All right, that's all 13 items. Again, thanks for listening. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. I'll probably divide this video up into clips. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy your Tesla. Don't forget to, again, don't forget to use a referral link. And if you've got any questions, leave comments below. I do try to answer them as quickly as I can. But... I'll catch you in the next one.